We are. We are live. Welcome to another live webinar brought to you by India Sourcing Trip and Virtual India Sourcing Show. How are you guys doing? I'm here with Margaret and Kevin from Australia and I'm Megla in Singapore. Hi, Margaret, Kevin, how are you? Hello, Megla. Hi, Megla. Hello, everyone. Good to see you again, Megla. <laughs> yeah, good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it's, I feel like it's been a while since we've done a, a live webinar. I think the last one was this july <laughs> yeah, yeah it's been a little while yeah. and you've been you've been busy too with other things and yeah we've yeah. been busy with other things and life goes on and exactly so today yeah. we've got a really good show plan for everyone and today of course is a very special day as well because we are going to be about five thousand members in the facebook group now five thousand wow oh. that's such wow. a huge milestone <laughs> The group started um, a year ago, I, th I think around March of last year, and it's just grown organically to 5,000 now. So I'm so excited about that. And um, so currently we are at 4,997. So we'll see Ooh. if more people will join the group during the show. <laughs> <laughs> Then we have a very special prize for the five five thousandth <laughs> member who will join us. Yeah, <laughs> we've got some gifts for you. So, um, all of you guys watching, if you have any friends who are not in the group but they are interested in sourcing from India, they're selling on Amazon. Go ahead and invite them to join the group, and we'll see if they are the five thousandth winner. <laughs> okay, someone's so got their, someone's got their name on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, cool. So today's show is super special. We've got two lovely ladies from V Trust, which is an inspection company. We've got Grace and Tatiana, and um, uh, they're going to be sharing a really comprehensive educational presentation talking all about inspections, when you need to do them, what exactly you need to um, keep in mind while doing inspections. And uh, VTrust is, of course, based out of China, but they have a very extensive network in India as well. And so they're going to be sharing their um, their services and, and with cities they, they operate in in India. So um, that's going to be very interesting. So one more request before we start. If you're watching this from the Facebook group, then you need to go to Facebook, sorry, StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook and give StreamYard access to your Facebook profile so that we can see who you are. Otherwise, we're not able to see your name. We just see you as Facebook user. So Cindy is here. Cindy, see, I was hello. waving at strangers, Megla. Hi, <laughs> 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 <How> stranger. <laughs> OK, Shelly's here, too. Who else is here? Bill and Mary. Hi, guys. <laughs> Looking Hi, Bill and Mary. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so let's get our guests on the show now, Grace and Tatiana. Hello, Grace, Tatiana, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hi. How are you going? Very good. <laughs> well, from right, Wangzhou in China. Nice wow. to see you. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, nice to see you too. And Tatiana is, of course, already famous. I think somebody in, in the group already posted that uh, um, they, they know Tatiana and they worked with her. So, <laughs> um, okay, so what we're going to do today is uh, Tatiana and Grace have a presentation prepared for us. They're going to go through the presentation. And of course, they're going to be answering any questions that anybody might have related to inspection. So feel free to type your questions in the, the chat or the comments section, wherever you're watching from, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, feel free to type your questions in. All right, so Grace and Tatiana, first of all, before we go into the slides, can you introduce yourselves and tell us how long have you been working with VTrust and um, you know what else do you do? <laughs> what, what is your experience? So um, Grace, do you wanna go first? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Grace. Uh, I am the account director at VTrust, VTrust Inspection Service. And uh, we are based in Guangzhou, VTrust head office. And uh, I have joined VTrust since the year 2007. So it's been the 13 years now uh, since I, I joined VTrust. I'm so happy to have the opportunity here to share with you uh, my experience with the quality control and uh, supply chain management. Right, fantastic. Tatiana, what about you? 
And hi everyone, my name is Tatiana. I'm originally from Russia, uh, but I live in China and I work in Vitros in the head office. So I'm account manager. I'm that person that is in contact with you, in, the con in contact with buyers, and I'm helping to uh, explain what is quality control and also help to organize your quality control projects. So I'm the person who you will be seeing at the major trade shows in China and Hong Kong and other countries as well. Uh, yeah, you can also email me with lots of your questions and I'll be glad to help you answering. Them. Awesome. Great. I also want to give a shout out to Stephen Selikoff for introducing us. So I've known Retrust since quite a few years, since when I was in China. Uh, but recently, Stephen did an introduction to us. So yeah, thanks a lot for that, Stephen. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> okay. Stephen. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get started. I'm going to share the screen now, uh, Grace and Tatiana, so you can go over to your presentation. And uh, Grace, you're going to start first by giving an overview of VTrust, and then um, Tatiana is going to go into the specifics. So over to you. Uh, yes, I will spend a few minutes to quickly uh, introduce VTrust services. Um, VTrust was founded in the year 2006, and it's now the leading inspection service provider in the world. Starting from the first day of our foundation, our mission is always helping buyers live better. When people import from other countries, it will bring, bring so much headaches if there is quality problem. Therefore, VTrust provides one-stop service of product inspection, supplier evaluation, and lab testing. We have full international accreditation, including International Federation of Inspection Agency and um, CNAS, AQ, SIQ from the Chinese government. And in the year 2019, over 3,200 buyers all over the world use VTrust services. So our team has been growing and now we have over 310 QC inspectors. Um, they are all our full-time employees. This is one of the unique selling points of VTrust services. We, in, we ensure to hire only the full-time employee, employee full-time inspectors in order to guarantee that our inspection quality uh, is stable. And all these uh, inspectors, they are now based in the major areas of Indian, China, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia. Let me show you the network we are covering. So in the slide, you can see a map of India. There are two, two parts area. One is the highlighted with, uh, with a darker color. So our inspection is mainly based near to New Delhi and uh, Mumbai. And also in the, uh, in the east part near to Bangladesh, Kolkata. And in the south, we also have uh, some inspectors. So these are our the areas we we are covering in India. And uh, we can also make is actually we can make inspection all over India. But uh, for other areas which is uh, not highlighted er area, we will we will need to send the inspector one day earlier and then spend some time traveling on on the on the way before the inspection. And besides India, we also have the inspectors based in China, Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, and uh, and and Bangladesh, as we and Thailand. Uh, similar to India, we divide uh, the the countries into two parts, two areas. The highlighted areas are the major manufacturing parts of the uh, of the country and then we will have a better price for for these areas so this is the basic information about now i will i will give leave the time to my colleague tatiana she will introduce what exact service we are providing hi everyone so today we will present uh and we will answer all the most common questions of the buyer 
about product inspection. So why the product inspection is important? When is best to do the product inspection and how the inspection is done? So let's go. So well, when you start to deal with a supplier and uh, you don't realize what are the possible problems that can happen. But I think your slides are not changing. Can you change, go to the next slide? Yeah, it's already. Okay, yeah, now it's good. Mm -mm. Start to deal with a supplier, you start to meet lots of different pro uh, problems. Quality of the product, disregard of the requirements, and mutual of these problems lie in misunderstanding because uh, you and your supplier probably speak different languages or they, you have different culture backgrounds and just different understanding of what is uh, correct and what is not correct. So, uh, uh, so this misunderstanding and other problems, they can result into your um, connections with your supplier and it, it can result into your product quality control, uh, into your product quality. That's why uh, you need to have uh, quality control. And as Benjamin Franklin says, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. The product inspections, uh, their main advantage is attention to your order. When your supplier knows that you before they are shipped from the factory, they will pay additional attention to your order, even during the manufacturing and after the manufacturing. You know, so, some of our customers, um, they uh, say to the supplier before they place an order that the uh, product inspection will occur uh, before the goods are sent or during the inspection, uh, during the production. And then the uh, suppliers will pay additional attention to uh, your order and try to meet your requirements uh, for product quality. Also, second advantage is uh, record and classification of defects. Uh, well, we are working with uh, many customers all over the world and frankly speaking, many people uh, see defects and see problems of the products differently. And we as inspectors uh, try to give as much thorough uh, view on your product as possible and uh, try to highlight even the smallest problems or smallest defects. So uh, by having the product inspection, you can see how the uh, product, the defects of the products are class classified and you can actually also learn uh, what is uh, acceptable to have in the product and what is not. And the third advantage is fast arrangement of uh, quality control. Uh, usually uh, we can con conduct the product inspection at least uh, when you have a booking at least three. When your product is already about to uh, about to be finished, about to be produced, you can just give us a call and we'll right away. So it's it's always very fast and doesn't um, matter where your supplier is located, uh, whether it's India or China or other countries. Uh, three days in advance booking is uh, working for uh, for all the areas. And the last but not least, advantages is that you don't need to travel yourself. Uh, product inspections can help you to save time and save money on uh, traveling to your factory. And uh, uh, yeah, you can be just uh, at your office or uh, at your home and you can receive the uh, inspection report online and you would see uh, the way how we see your product right from the factory. Uh, now I'll just tell you when uh, quality control is done. Uh, actually answering this question, I would say that uh, it should be done all the time. Uh, you, your product quality from the beginning to the end. So when you, uh, when you find your supplier, uh, you need to verify and understand whether this supplier is suitable for you and whether they will produce the product that is uh, per your requirements. Here you can see the different 
services that we as inspection company provide and they are all um, designed to meet different uh, different needs of suppliers but uh, of the uh, buyers but today in our uh, in our presentation we will cover the pre-shipment inspection because this is the most common type of inspection used uh, since it's uh, it happens when 100 of products are manufactured just to give you an idea um, what can happen because uh, when we do the product uh, pre-shipment inspection, all products are manufactured, and sometimes we find some major problems with be prevented uh, when the order just started. That's why the pre-production inspection and during production inspection are also very important to conduct. But uh, yeah, buyers and importers they they uh, choose the type of for them, and that is more most um, meeting their needs and, and requirements. So today we are going to talk about pre-shipment inspection. So now we move to what actually is inspected uh, during the inspection. And uh, here you can see the main points, the main details of our inspection that uh, our inspection report covers. And uh, some importers, when they think about inspections, they think that it's only a visual, uh, visual quality check, but it's not. Our product inspections are very thorough and we cover all these details. So we check the quantity of the product and visual defects, as well as we conduct the safety and functionality testing for your product at the factory. Product dimensions and weight, uh, packing, marking, labeling, and uh, carton, as well as you. Now let me share the exact um, sample report, the exact report that uh, we already did to one of the orders that was produced in India. So guys, if you have any questions about inspections, please type them in the comments and we'll take questions after Tatiana, Tatiana goes through her presentation. So. Yeah, now you can go full screen. Yeah. Now you can see the example of the inspection report. This is the real inspection report. Inspe inspection ha happened not so long ago. It was 5th of March. And uh, we inspected the uh, kitchenware set. It's a pot which was produced in India in Maharashtra. Um, the customer was from Italy and uh, the total order was 4,650 sets. So uh, just for your understanding, some, for some inspections, uh, well, usually uh, we conduct the inspections randomly, not on the full quantity of, we check 200 sets from 4,650 sets. But uh, if you would like to, uh, if you would like us to inspect the whole order, we can also do that. And uh, it's not a problem for us to do the full inspection of the whole order. Now let me show you what exactly, uh, here you can see this inspection summary. Um, so the product inspection covered quantity, workmanship, on-site testing, product specification, packing, marking, labeling, and special requirements. And here you can see our results of the inspection. So some points passed, some points failed, and some points were pending. Pending means that Probably the problems are not so big, but um, we need to point them out for you uh, as a buyer and as a buyer will decide whether it's acceptable for you or no. This is another part of the inspection report. It's AQL. Uh, basically, it's a standard that we base our uh, sampling uh, for the inspection. Later, I will cover how it's, uh, how it's um, calculated and what does it mean, critical major and minor. So just now, um, I'm just showing how it looks like, and later we will go back to that. 
So here you can see that uh, the remarks and the defective uh, rate was uh, 6%. Also, customer had uh, client, uh, special requirements. So, for example, it's all those pain points that you have with your order. Uh, you can also coordinate all of them, uh, all of them to us, and we will uh, focus on. So here you can see the problem remarks is the uh, problems that we found uh, in the order. So here you can see that 23 out of 200 inspect inspected samples were with missing traces of copper plating and also with residue polish and with dent on the product. So this is afraid. That's why the whole report uh, is failed. And but down there, I'll show you some pictures of uh, what are the actual problems with the order. So here you can see that there are some missing traces of copper plating and here as well. Here you can also see examples of the defects. So a defect of only one defect is quite high a defect rate. Uh, that's why we pointed out for you and uh, um, show that uh, it, that's why our inspection failed. Here you can also see the residue polish powder on the product. Here as well. And here as well. Uh, the inspection and show how uh, how it works. So the first part of our inspection is uh, quantity check. So when our inspector comes to your factory, we check uh, the product quantity. We check the packed, unpacked, and unfinished products, and uh, also tell you, for example, whether there are some products maybe not produced. Then uh, it's workmanship. Uh, check. Workmanship check are all visual defects that the product has. So here you can see that there's some uh, poor finishing, scratch marks, or off center hole placement. And here you can see the uh, classification of the defects. It's critical, major, and minor. Uh, later we'll go back to that and I'll explain to you what is critical, major, and minor. The third part of the inspection is on site testing. So uh, on-site testing are those functionality and safety testing uh, for the product that are done uh, at the factory. So uh, we'll not only check how the product looks like, but we'll also select the sample size and we'll conduct the uh, on-site tests on the either full sample size or smaller sample test. So for example, for pots, we'll check the accessories for the full sample size. And we'll also check the stability, whether the uh, product would slip and or not tip over. Also conduct the car uh, carton drop test to see how securely the product is placed inside the packaging. Uh, color comparison check to see uh, whether your uh, whether the product is following this bag uh, and the paint and color is the same. As well as wobble lid fitting check, water leakage, tape check, and different testing. And uh, in Vitrust, we have more than 1,300 different checklists for different kinds of products. Uh, we all we designed them all based on the main features for the products. And uh, well, um, you also can edit the checklist and you can also uh, tell us what testing would you like to conduct uh, during the inspection? So the checklists are editable and we can uh, input some checklists. Now I go to the next part of the inspection is product specifications. So product dimensions and weight uh, for, different, uh, for different samples and compare them with your spec and reference sample if you have it. Uh, so here you can see uh, that the Specification check was done, and uh, in red, there are some um, 
And as well, we will check the packing. So your product uh, inner boxes and outer curtains will also check the um, size and weight, the marking, and uh, so on. This is this information is also very uh, for you when you confirm the uh, product data to your shipping agent the uh, product weight and product sizes will affect uh, the size of the container that you need and uh, the amount of space in the container that you need. As well, we'll check the marking and or barcodes or uh, item numbers, carton numbers. If you sell on Amazon, if, if you have a special uh, like that um, many customers they just provide to us the artwork of this uh, labeling and marking uh, and logo and we'll compare on site uh, your artwork with the real product that ha uh, that is it we'll also follow it up action works so we start the export and an export marking, and then go down to the product and check packaging and the product itself, the strength of the cordon, the assortment. So we, we make sure that they're all the same. And so on. There's also... Uh, pictures of all the dimension checks and all also will provide the video. Now I would like to go back to the presentation and uh, continue with that. So I'll uh, stop sharing the screen and go back to presentation. So is it back? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope it is. So, uh, if you're yeah, also selling on Amazon, okay, that's no problem. So, if you're also selling on Amazon, uh, we'll help you to check the Amazon. Uh, just for for your information, uh, there are lots of different um, uh, requirements by Amazon for different kinds of products. Um, for, for packaging and labeling. Like, for example, that uh, there should be cushioning between the items inside the, bro the box and the uh, unit might, must contain secure packaging and there should be suffocation warning. And here I also uh, tell you one story from my experience. So I had a customer uh, who was uh, making toys and uh, he was selling on Amazon in US. And then he decided to switch, uh, well, also start selling on Amazon Germany and France and uh, just uh, pass the products that he already had to the Amazon France and uh, Germany. So the products were returned because the, there was no uh, warning and um, translated to those languages. His information and warnings uh, were written only in English but according to uh, the, uh, the market that products are going to be placed on uh, are uh, speaking not uh, English, the warnings and the informa product information has to be translated into the native language of that market. So we'll also help you to check that uh, and uh, in uh, as well, we'll check the product labeling. So all ASEIN uh, and FNSIQ, UPS barcodes uh, will help you to scan them uh, at the factory during the inspection. And this is how the um, barcode looks like. Uh, now I'll go to the different part of the presentation. So uh, here we'll answer another question. So what are all products inspected during the inspection? Uh, usually that product 
uh, during the inspection. So um, this sample size we will uh, we will design based on the AQL standard. Uh, it's acceptance quality uh, limit, and this is the standard. This is how it looks like. I'll show you the main uh, details of that. So I'll show you how we decide uh, how many pieces we need to inspect to understand whether your product fails or passes. So here, uh, just for your information, the default sampling standard is AQL level two. So here you can see the general inspection level. It's one, two, and three. Uh, number two is uh, default uh, sampling standard. And number one, size. Number three is higher sample size. So I'll show you how it works. So let's say that uh, you are buying the um, uh, food containers and your total order quantity is 5,000 pieces. So how do you understand how many pieces will we check? Here you go to the lot or, or batch size and find 5,000. It's here from 3,000 to 10,000. And then you go and see the intersection of the general inspection level. For us, the default inspection level is two, but actually uh, you can also set your own inspection level. You can, um, for example, say that you would like to check less products or you, and you would like to inspect a higher sample size. So uh, I'll show it on the default standard and I'll show how it works. So if you buy 5,000 pieces, your sample size is L. And now we go to a different uh, table, it's table two. And here you can see that L equals 200. So if you buy 5,000 pieces, uh, we will check 200 pieces uh, during the inspection as they during the random selection of, uh, of the samples. And uh, now there is another question. So how do you decide whether it fails or passes? How many pieces should be uh, defective uh, to, uh, to accept the order? Or how many defects uh, should be not in your order to, to, to pass the inspection? And I'll tell you one thing is uh, that actually quite many people don't understand and uh, there are very, very rare situations when there is zero defect. Uh, there's always might be some problem. It's either human factor or uh, the equipment might be not calibrated or the equipment might be broken or something else will go wrong. So there are always defects and your main, that's what we also do. The any defects are there and we decide whether it, um, is within the acceptable limit or it goes beyond. So we are, uh, we are taking this in, as an example. Your sample size is 200 pieces. For, and how do you decide whether it's failed or passes? There is also standard uh, default minor defects. Uh, but now I'll show you our default standard that works in Beatrice. So critical zero means that if you uh, we find one critical defect in the order, the whole order should be rejected and rechecked uh, all over again. Because critical defects are something that uh, might affect the, pro uh, the consumer's health or safety. And of course, you would not like to have your products um, posing uh, big dangers to your to your consumers. That's why the critical uh, defect rate is zero. And uh, major two point five means uh, this. It means acceptable quality limit. and find 2.5 limit in the table and here you can see AC and RE. So AC it's acceptable, RE is rejected and uh, as you know we here already saw your sample size and found the sample size that is recommended for your order. Uh, here is 200. So the, ex the amount of acceptable uh, defects you can see on 
and quality limit. So we look here, it's uh, for 2.5 limit, it's 10. So it means that if we check your order, we check 10 major defects in the order. It means that the product, that the inspection find 11 major defects. It means that inspection will be failed. This uh, defect rate is about 5% uh, defects. So if we check 200 pieces and we find 11 major defects, it means that your total order de defect And uh, here for minor 4.0, uh, I also show how it works. It works the same. Uh, here you can see intersection of 200 pieces, and you can see here 14 and 15. So if 14 minor defects, it will be still acceptable. But if we find 15 uh, minor defects, it will be already rejected. This uh, defect rate means around 10% uh, of the defects in the order. I hope it's clear. But if it's not clear, you can write to me the uh, questions later. I'll answer you. So uh, now I'll just show the examples of what is critical, what is major and minor. So critical is uh, something that is unsafe for your consumers. Uh, yeah, it can be... Different examples uh, are in different. Uh, if it is a food container, it can be uh, blood or insects inside there, or some very sharp points that uh, might be unsafe for the consumers. There are also different uh, examples for that for in different product types. Uh, if the product will not pass the safety uh, testing, it will be also a critical defect. Or if you source, uh, let's say, fabrics or textiles, if we critical defect, because uh, then the product is unsafe for the consumer. Uh, I will move to the major defect. So the functionality and usability of your product. Uh, the, you can see the chip on the lid for the food container. This is a major defect. And uh, here you can see the example of the dirt. Uh, this dirt is removable, so it's easy to clean it. That's why it's minor defect. But if this dirt was not removable and was not easy to clean it, it will be a major defect because it's an obvious appearance fault and it will affect the sellability of your product. And your consumers might be not happy with that and they'll tend to. Uh, and uh, minor defects are uh, those problems with the product that do don't affect the usability uh, of the product. So it's not function and, uh, and usability problems, but it's something that minor uh, that is a problem Thing that can uh, reduce the sellability. Usually it's how the product look, looks like. So let's say it's a dust or some scratches, or here you can see an un Now we move to uh, prepared uh, for you as the uh, buyers and importance uh, because many people are asking how should I tell my supplier that my product should be this quality or how should I confirm a sample so there are different techniques and there are different uh, documents that you can have uh, a few tips and details on those um, documents so it's confirmed sample and uh, performance checklist and defect classification. So when you confirm a sample, uh, it, not only how the product looks like, but all different, uh, it's what are the measurements and 
accessories because uh, it's actually very common when the person comes and says oh you know i like this product i want this exactly the same product and uh, then the product requirements are not specified and they are not confirmed and your supplier can understand just literally anything uh, about this product and they can uh, misunderstand what it actually you would like to have or uh, they could try to change something in order to reduce the production costs for themselves. So when you when you confirm a sample, confirm each part of it. So let's say you can when you confirm uh, it confirms uh, your requirements. For example, for this food container, it should have a smooth and glossy surface. And when you confirm the colors, you don't need don't, don't just say, you know, I would like to have a green color or a yellow color because in different languages and actually different people perception of colors, lots of different ranges of these colors. So when you confirm the, uh, the color, you need to confirm the Pantone color number. It's something uh, that is... Uh, that can be designed by yourself. Let's say when you design the logo, you can also find your Pantone color there. Or when you choose the material or paint, you can also find the Pantone color number there as well. And uh, then uh, when you confirm the measurements and size, also make sure uh, that you confirm the, the exact measurements and product tolerance. So let's say when you confirm the measurement, but you can also say, what is the tolerance of these uh, measurements? For example, if the, if the product is a bit higher, how high it can be to be still acceptable for you? And let's say if the volume is smaller of the product, so how exactly smaller it could be, it's around uh, 3 to 5 to 10 percent. It all depends on customers' requirements and um, what actually acceptable for the customer. Then when you also uh, confirm the marking and labeling of the product, uh, we also recommend to confirm how the marking and labeling is placed on the product and uh, exact places where they placed. Because there is there are common problems with the logos, especially when the logos are misplaced and they're not placed uh, in the middle. Or, uh, and they tend to be either to the right or to the left or to higher or near the bottom. So when you confirm uh, the marking and just mention how high the logo should be placed on your, uh, on your product, let's say how high from the top and from the bottom and from the right and from the left. Also, uh, when you confirm the sample, you can you need also to confirm the materials and accessories of the product. I had one customer who was buying the screwdrivers, and uh, basically, when he was confirming the screwdriver um, requirements to his supplier, he just showed the picture in his. Uh, so. When he received the products, he understood that actually the screwdriver is not the same as he wanted because he wanted a right. Uh, uh, but what he received was actually plastic handle to the screwdriver. Uh, less quality, much less quality than he was expecting. And it was too late for him to uh, bring the pro products back to, to the uh, supplier. So he just had to accept this product fault and learn on them and have the product inspections. He came to us back already for a repeated order and he told us this, um, this story. Uh, as well, uh, when you confirm the sample, you need to confirm the safety, uh, the, the conformity to the safety standards and uh, standards of your market. So uh, uh, safety standards and the compliance standards for different kinds of products. So when you uh, confirm the sample, you better check with your um, with your market or uh, with your um, 
government of uh, which standards and uh, safety compliance uh, certificates should be presented to place the, the product on the market. And product, it can be through traditional uh, markets or it can be through e-commerce. Before the product is placed on the market, it should uh, comply with the standards. As well as if you sell it on Amazon, you also need to make sure that uh, product and its packaging confirms to Amazon uh, to Amazon requirements. The inner and out, outer packaging confirm how strong the packaging should be. So the product will be not uh, damaged during the shipment or uh, or during the uh, packaging process itself. So when you confirm the sample, uh, the, the packaging, you also need to confirm how strong the carton box should be and exactly GSM for the inner boxes uh, or how many layers of carton there are. Uh, yeah, I've covered all the points about uh, confirming the sample. So now I'll go just to next slide. So it's performance checklist. It's actually something that is done uh, during the inspections. Uh, we check it uh, during the inspection for your product, uh, but we also the checklist of uh, tests that products should pass before uh, products are shipped from the factory. So you can think about your product uh, usage and uh, you can think of the possible um, problems of the product, and uh, and you can create the pro uh, the product checklist based on the those um, standards or safety or functionality requirements for the products that uh, the product would have. So, uh, buying the food container and the possible tests for the product to pass are the accessories check uh, check so you need to make sure that there's no missing no containers without the lid and there are no other uh, accessories missing uh, also color comparison check so you need to make sure that the product's um, color is not um, different from piece to piece test that the product does not wobble uh, when it's placed on the flat surface, that there is no different uh, smell, no order or strong smell of the uh, in, in the product, that the capacity is within the tolerance and the product is safe to use uh, in different conditions. Uh, here is microwave and dishwasher. Uh, this is the example of the test that we do during the inspection. But as I said, that uh, it's a performance checklist when you confirm the sample and before uh, you start production uh, with your supplier. Because when tax requirements that he needs to uh, meet, it will be much easier for him to um, create and produce the product that you like and uh, would uh, confirm to your requirements. And uh, one of the last things is defect classification. So during the inspection, we will also classify uh, defects that we will find uh, to critical, major and minor, as I just explained to you. So uh, you could also visualize uh, when you confirm your sample, what could be uh, possible problems with the order. And actually you could just uh, not only visualize, but find your competitors, let's say, and comments and feedbacks on their products and see what are the main faults for their products as well. Or you could go to the supermarket and also see in the supermarket that are similar to your type. And there already through this uh, research, you could understand what are the possible products for your product, uh, what are the possible problems for your product. 
and you could classify it into the list of the defects. So here you could see the possible defects for food container or some sharp points, insect, hair, blood, or some burrs, or rough or sharp edges of glass, and so on. So uh, yeah, there's also some major and, de and minor defects. Uh, actually, for different kind, uh, for different people, uh, mm -hmm. de defect classification can be different. Um, there are our own defect classification, but uh, sometimes the customer uh, customers would also coordinate it to us, and uh, we will check against their de defect classification lists. And I'll just show uh, some examples of the defects that we found during the inspection. So here's the example of critical defect. You can see that there is an insect body on the lid, and of course it will be uh, not acceptable for you or your customer to have a product with a problem like that. Uh, also major defects uh, here like broken lid and poor glazed lid. So it's those defects that uh, affect the product usability or function, and some I, and also poor polishing here as well, and some minor defects that uh, are considered as problems, but they need to be pointed importer and uh, yeah, there are some problems maybe that are cleanable, and it's actually very easy to get rid of them. And uh, the last question is how the and uh, how fast actually it is. Uh, it should be booked at least three days in advance. You could just email us, you could email me, or you can email uh, by the email on our to log in on uh, our online booking system and place an order there. Then as soon as the payment is uh, covered for the inspection, we will schedule the inspection, we will call your supplier and we'll tell you that, uh, we'll tell them that we're an inspection company and we're going to do the uh, product inspection for uh, you. Uh, now, when we send the inspector to your uh, factory to check the product, the inspection report will be available for you within 24 hours after the inspection. So you will receive the inspection report um, to your email box and you could see it online or you can download it in PDF. And also you can, the advantages of seeing it online is that you can enlarge the pictures and you can see um, very thoroughly uh, what are the defects and uh, what are the problems of your order. Uh, as well, we could also attach the videos for your um, of your product or maybe of the production line. Effects uh, that the products have. And uh, yeah, our service will not finish as uh, soon as we uh, issue your report. We are always glad to help you and answer any of your questions about report or about the product defects or about how to deal with your supplier and uh, any other questions. So that's it. Uh, yeah, our presentation and webinar here is finished, but uh, we're welcoming your questions and uh, hope we'll give you very detailed answers. Yeah, thank you so much, Tatiana. That was uh, really good, very comprehensive very detailed. So thanks a lot for that. So any questions from anybody, please type them in the comments. We will take questions now. And I'm also going to just show uh, Tatiana's email address over here so you can reach out to her. So it's just Tatiana at v-trust.com. Um, that's the email address. So we do have a couple of questions here, Tatiana, Grace, and I have some questions too watching your presentation. Um, also, I want to point out that um, Tatiana and Grace are giving us a special offer. So there will be a special link that I will post in the description later, and you can get 5% off your first inspection if you book via that uh, that link. So, okay. 
Let's take some questions now. So Monica is asking, does VTrust offer advice with compliance certificates required by the US? Yeah, this is actually a, a question that we get frequently in our group because many people are uh, importing products to the US for the first time and they're not aware of what compliance or what testing or what certificates are required. So can you help with that as well? Uh, yes, yes. Normally, we, uh, you can send us the product description, the picture and the material and uh, uh, information, whether it's intended for to be used by kids, whether it's it will be full contact product and the destination country, yeah, like US. And, and then we, we we can recommend the test uh, to, to, to be tested. Okay, and so when do you do that recommendation? Like, do you do it when, uh, because even before they place the order, they need to know what uh, what standards need to be met, right? Yes, yes. So normally it's before you place the order, you need to ensure whether this product can be compliant to the uh, destination country's uh, regulations. Yeah, so you will give that advice to people before they place an order, right? Yes, yes. And do you charge for that or is that? Uh, right now, we, we do not charge for this part. Okay. Okay. Uh, but of course, they have to then come and place an inspection with you, right, for that product. Like, because, yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking some people might not, you know, place an inspection. They might just come and ask you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it would be it would be much better if you, you can also combine the inspection service together with the lab testing service. <laughs> okay, okay. But just just yeah. quickly, that that's um, to, 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 when you talk about lab testing, and um, that's it's sort of like a totally different thing, isn't it, Megla? You know, sort of mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be fair on the girls if you know, sort of all of a sudden, a lot of people tomorrow morning and they're gonna bombard you with quest questions. Can I send this into America? Can I send this to Germany? Yeah. I mean, a lab test is an analysis of the actual product and the background of the product before you even think about making the product. Is that right? Uh, you, you mean uh, they, uh, they will provide the uh, information about the market and also the product picture? Yeah, well, it, from a from a picture, um, yeah. I mean, some people you can easily Google. Um, you know, if I wanted to, to buy a certain product in India or Bangladesh or China, and I want to send that product into America or to Germany, uh, I can easily Google those the the questions that we just spoke about. But I don't need to um, come on, help me there, Mark. I mean. We've done this a million times when we've been looking at stuff and I mean Yeah, well yeah, a lot of it's available yeah, on the, a yeah. lot of the information's available on the internet if people do their research as well as like expecting you to be answering sort of every question. So people should really do their own due diligence first before they sort of contact you. Then if they've got a, a maybe a grey area, can you clar help me clarify this? I've worked this far out, but I'm stuck. Um, because we don't want everyone just pinging you every two minutes. Can I send wood to in, you know, from India to America to Germany? Because you're going to be very busy. Yeah, so I guess because many people are importing these products for the first time, so they're not really sure what the requirements are, right? So, for example, if I'm, you know, importing this mug to the U.S., what are the certifications that are required? What is the standards in terms of the materials? What are the tests required? You know. So those kinds of questions people might come and ask you, but that's what we are saying that this kind of general information may be available online on Google. So, you know, people just go Google this stuff. Don't, don't <laughs> go to Tatiana with every little question. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's go to the next question. What is included in the inspection package? Example, lab testing included. Can we opt for what lab testing we want? So inspection and lab testing, totally two different things. So let's clarify that. And can you explain, I mean, you touched upon it a little bit, but can you just go over the process of lab testing and when that is required? 
So, uh, yeah, as Michael just mentioned, that inspection and lab testing are two different things. Usually, lab testing is conducted just for a sample. So, when you create your product and you have the sample, the lab testing uh, will be, well, the, the testing will be conducted to like three to five pieces of your product. And product inspection is already uh, a more thorough and uh, check of bigger amount of the, uh, of the pieces in your order. So uh, as we just showed, for example, you buy 5,000 pieces, during the inspection, we'll, we'll check 200 pieces. While during the lab testing, only three to five pieces will be checked. And um, yeah, the inspection, uh, it includes the quantity check as well as packing and marking and labeling check and product um, function check and how the product looks like. Usually the lab testing is, uh, something that goes uh, right to the safety, let's say, of the product or the main function of the product. So there are different standards that your product has to follow. Let's say uh, if you buy a mug, you need to make sure that uh, there is no hazardous elements used in the uh, materials that can be in contact with your uh, food. So here you will have to do the uh, testing for the materials of the mug um, to make sure that it's safe to use. Yeah, but for example, if you have uh, uh, earphones, you need to make sure that uh, the function and uh, it, the function uh, of the earphones is as per standard uh, of the market that the product is going to be placed. So it's, it's uh, different things, the inspection and the lab testing. Right. And for, for lab testing, you know, it could be like FDA, you got to meet FDA standards or maybe ROS if you're uh, exporting to, um, to, to Europe and also mm -hmm. they're different and, or CE or UL for electrical mm -hmm. kind of products. So, okay. Um, let's see, we've got another question from Darren Rhea. So she's asking, is it wise to do two inspections? One on the first day when the factory starts making your order to catch any issues early and then the second when they finish the order. So yes, of course, there are different types of inspections. There is a pre-production, there is during production, and then there is pre-shipment inspection. So I think you covered a little bit of this before in your presentation as well, Tatiana, but do you wanna just quickly go over the various um, you know, types of inspections and then yeah. the yeah. costs, the related costs involved for each of the types of inf inspections and you know when to, do uh, a pre-production inspection? Sure. So uh, it is wise to do the inspection at different steps of your production. For example, as I said, that the most common one is pre-shipment when your whole products are already uh, produced and they are manufactured and packed. But sometimes it's better to catch the issues earlier, uh, yeah, as Darren said, and uh, pre-production or during production inspection might be also useful. Let's say uh, you're making a new product and um, yeah, let's say that it is uh, electronics. Then for electronics, it's uh, very uh, important to check the quality of components that are going into the production. Because in the end, on the uh, end manufacturer is just assembly line and they're going to assemble the product from different so pre-production inspection here will be uh, very useful to check on the quality of those components. Let's say uh, inspector checks the quality of the components and he says that the components are uh, not as good quality as they uh, should be. So then the manufacturer can just change the components uh, before starting the production at all. Um, yeah, and uh, let's say if it is during production, it also is important to see the workmanship and how the products were produced. Uh, if you were, um, let's say, making the uh, kitchenware, so uh, during production uh, inspection happens when around five to 10 to 30% of the whole order is already pr produced. So when the inspector goes to your production, when let's say 10% is produced, and he checks not only raw material and uh, final products that are just starting to come out from the production line. 
And if we see that there are, if there are any problems with the product uh, already there, when just a few pieces were produced fully, uh, we'll also notify you. And it's a, it's very good time to stop the production and uh, talk through the issues and how to um, how to correct the issues. So uh, later on, the production uh, when it started again, they will not uh, repeat those. Um, problems that happen. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And but most Amazon and e-commerce sellers, they just do pre-shipment inspection, right? Depends on two uh, two factor. One is the the most important one is the budget. If you have the budget for only one inspection, we will recommend the pre-shipment inspection service. Then um, the inspection result can re represent the whole batch because we randomly select the sample when the goods has been uh, fully packed to the cartons. Um, so if you have more budget, for sure, it will be better to detect some problem earlier stage. Then you can uh, include also during production inspection. So this is about the, your budget. And also the second, it's about whether this is new product, just like Tatiana mentioned just now. Some very, even like mark, sometimes if you have some new design, you have new artwork or new seal printing uh, method, you are, if you wait to the, and if you wait to pre-shipment inspection and then found that the logo color, the printing is not well done, it will be very late. So if you find that, this may be a high risk, then it's, it, it will be better to inspection and then uh, find the problem at earlier stage of the production. So, yeah, this is the two main factors you, you will consider when you decide the inspection plan. Right. So do you also help people to prepare the product spec sheet or uh, you know, like the, the defects table that you had shown, the minor, major defects. So some people are not familiar with the products at all. So would you help to create that uh, sheet for them as well? Uh, because we, in our, in our database, because we make over 6,000 inspections every month, we already have uh, over 1,600 checklists in our system uh, for different product category. So we can send you uh, the one that is closer uh, for, for your product, and then you can refer to it. In case you find uh, something that you need to change and update, you can also uh, tell us, and then we will prepare a tailor-made checklist. In this way, it will be easier. When the buyer, uh, this is the first time you buy, you're not sure what kind of problem will be, will happen. We already have a template, a general one, and then you can also uh, consider what defect you have found when you receive the pre-production sample from the factory, and then we also include extra points to the checklist and prepare the tailor-made checklist. So, of course, this checklist needs to be given to the supplier before uh, the, the, sh the production begins, right? So, mm, yeah, it will be helpful. Not all the buyers do this, but actually, like, like we always suggest that it's very um, helpful if you can tell the supplier when you place the order that there will be a third party inspection service. In this way, they will be very careful handling your order. So if you also tell them more specific, in, in more details, uh, the, the checklist, I think this is also good for the supplier to understand you are, your concern about the quality and that you are professional in this field and they will also follow up more carefully. Right, yeah. I think that totally makes sense. Um, okay, so Cindy is asking, what is the cost for pre-shipment inspections? So do you want to talk about the costs? Yeah, uh, our cost is uh, very clear. It's 268 US dollars per one man day of inspection. Uh, one man day of inspection means eight hours working at the factory. So this is a flat rate and uh, it includes already the traveling fee. So we don't charge anything else uh, of that, so it's 268 per one man day uh, of inspection, 
before you place an order with us, we could talk through uh, your order and uh, approximate amount of time that is needed for the inspection. And we will give you a quote. Sometimes, well, in most cases, it's, a, it's around one man day. Uh, yeah, if their orders are bigger, uh, there can be 1.5 or two man days. And it all depends on the size of your order and the amount of sample size that we need to check. Yeah, over 70% of the inspection can be done in one man day. Right. And uh, it doesn't matter where the, sh the inspection needs to be done, right? With city, does that affect uh, the cost or no? It, it does. Uh, when I give the, when, when I show the network just now, uh, we actually have two areas. One is the highlighted areas. So for the highlighted areas, the all-inclusive price is 268 per mandate, all-inclusive without any extra charge for traveling or hotel fee. And these highlighted areas are actually the major manufacturing regions of different countries, like China, its coastal part, and Indian, uh, the other areas near to New Delhi, uh, or near to Mumbai, or near to uh, Kolkata. So, so for these highlighted areas, it's all inclusive price. For other areas, we may surcharge the uh, mandate spend on the traveling. We'll, but you don't need to worry about this because we will always confirm with you. We will always tell you in advance. We will send you the quote for confirmation before arranging the, the trip. Okay. So Sherfang is asking, does the is the fee the same for China and India? Uh, yes, yes, yes. And Vietnam also, right? You cover Vietnam yes. too. China, India, Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Bangladesh. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so Cindy's asking, will the pre-shipment inspection include checking FBA compliance like labeling? Yeah. Yes, it would. Uh, we will check the labels and barcodes uh, because FBA are very strict on their requirements of the size of the labels and the size of the barcodes and the barcodes that should be scannable. So we will check that as well during the uh, pre-shipping inspection. You just need to mention to us that you sell on Amazon and that's it because we have the checklist for uh, labeling and marking check. Yeah, for Amazon products. Yes, the template, the report template for uh, Amazon product is a little bit uh, different because we have extra parts for the labeling check. Uh, you can contact us later and then we'll share with you a sample report uh, which is for the Amazon product. Right, right, makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, also for some products in India, they are handcrafted, right? Mm -hmm. So is that, um, is that more difficult to do an inspection because because they are handcrafted there is some variation in you know in the products they're not exactly the same like machine made products can be exactly the same but handcrafted products there can be some variation from one product to another so how do you manage that or do you have any advice for people on how to manage um, you know the, the variation in handcrafted products Yes, this is a very good point. It's for different, same for different countries, India, China, as long as it's a handcraft product, it always has some problem that uh, the products are not exactly the same in the, even it's the same batch. So yeah. for, for us, we will try to do that. Uh, we will still point out the defects. We think it could be a problem in the report. We, we tend to be, sometimes we tend to be stricter but because for our report, we will not we will not just give a result without any details. You you can see that in the report, we show also also the pictures, and we try to give a more detailed uh, description. In this way, you can also double check and then com confirm whether this problem is acceptable. For example, we inspect like many like wooden products. There are like uh, there are some that not because it's from the from the wood material. And mm -hmm. uh, some factory would say that it's very normal. Uh, it's, it's always like this. Some pieces unavoidably will have this problem. But then yeah. we will, for us, we will still keep it as defects. If we are, we follow a, a lower level of standard uh, during the inspection, it will be very 
risky. That's why we will tell our inspector, so let's keep stricter standard because in this way we will take picture, we will record in detail, and uh, maybe uh, because the report, although we give fail, the buyer still have the chance to double check the details and confirm whether this is acceptable uh, according to his understanding of, of the target market. And if it's acceptable, the buyer can still acceptable that uh, he can go on to talk with the supplier how to rework or replace. Right. So this is just something that people need to be aware of when they're sourcing from India or China or, or wherever. If there are yeah. handcrafted products, there may be some variations and you need to uh, just be aware of that. And it will be helpful if you have an approved sample because mm -hmm. uh, in the approved sample, we can already see some some issue that may be uh, counted as defect, but if it's already approved in the, in the golden sample, then we will see, ah, okay, uh, although this exists in the production sample, since, it, since it's the same as the approval sample and the client has been, not, has been uh, aware of it, then we may not count, count them into defect. So if you have, you can receive, for handcraft product, it, it's better not, re not to receive just one piece sample to approve you may receive one or two or three and then you already see the difference and and you can confirm in advance whether this is acceptable and tell us then in this yeah. way it can avoid the uh, controversy later yeah and also ask the supplier up front you know if you are not familiar with the product just ask the supplier up front what are the variations that can be expected in the product like you said if it's a wooden product then maybe there might be some color differences or you know the finish or or whatever so yeah just make sure you're you're aware of that and ask the supplier okay so we've got another question is there a minimum inspection amount that is small first order maybe only 100 piece 100 items so yeah is that too small an order to do an inspection like 100 items no, it's not too small. We can even do the inspection even of one item, then it will be a sample <laughs> check. So, yeah, uh, yeah as long as uh, um, as long as uh, you would need to have an inspection, we'll help you, of course, to conduct it. And uh, uh, yeah, our minimum inspection uh, time is one man day. So uh, we can use this day to thoroughly check your 100 items and give you a full report and we can inspect the full amount uh, yeah as we mentioned before so if it is 100 items and uh, um, it's not big or complicated product maybe we can check the full amount of the order uh, within one mandate and then you will have the quality inspection report for your full full order yeah, you also just have to take in account the the cost, and you know if you're just ordering a hundred pieces, do you have the budget for an inspection? I think that's something that you need to keep in mind, um, right, Margaret? What, what do you say? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> My dog was being naughty again. Uh, yeah, no, if you've only got 100 pieces, like you're looking at sort of $2.60 or something a piece. So you've got to work out, you know, have you, you know, if it's only a $20 item, it's probably not viable because of the, you know, the loss of most of your profit probably. But, you know, if you're doing a more premium product and you're looking at $40, $45 or something, it's probably still viable if you bear in mind that, you know, as part of your cost of that, you know, when you're sort of working at the very start, can you afford right. to do the product? Um, okay, so we got another question from Sher Fang. He's asking, does the inspection fee remain the same if we change the AQL to tighter, example, AQL1? Yes, it will be the same. We charge only per mandate. And uh, if it is AQL1, uh, it means the major or minor defects or it means the stricter, the yeah, color is stricter lower than the default yeah. standard yeah. so the mandate charge is the same right yeah so this does not uh, affect the number of pieces to be checked right mm. because the number of pieces to be checked might affect the amount of time taken to do that yeah, right 
Uh, you are right. Uh, because this question is show AQL one point zero. It's the tolerance. If yeah. uh, you are going the the question you are going to ask is about uh, changing the sampling level. For example, uh, changing from level two to level three. That means that more pieces yeah. need to be checked. Uh, it's possible the requirement that we cannot finish it with within one mandate and then in this way the cost will be higher then we will tell maybe we need a uh, half extra one more uh 1.5 mandates in total to finish and then the, the the total cost will be higher but the mandate uh, unit price is still the same mm. right and how do you select the samples that you test because like when you go to a factory, then let's say, you know, all the whatever, 5,000 samples are kept in, a, you know, in boxes and they are ready. How do you choose which sample to check? I mean, does the supplier give the samples to you and say that, okay, here are five, you know, 200 samples for you to check? Or does your inspector go and randomly choose the samples and how do they choose the, the actual products to check? Mm -hmm. uh, the first step we when we go to arrive at the factory, we will go to check the total quantity available on site. In this way, we can know uh, which how, from which pile we should select the samples randomly from, and then uh, we will randomly first randomly select the carton from different corners of the from mm -hmm. from from the warehouse. Uh, some from the top, some from the bottom, some from the middle. We 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 have a uh, we need to ensure that it's selected from different corners. And also, uh, for the just now, Pat, Tatiana mentioned about how the sample size. For also, we need to ensure the inspected samples are from different cartons. Uh, if there are, for example, there are one hundred cartons in total, then we need to ensure we we will select a sample from at least um. 10 cartons, the square root of 100. The square root of 100 is 10 cartons. So uh, if the sample size is 200, we will need to ensure that uh, these 200 pieces of product will be selected from the 10 cartons that we uh, randomly selected select from the different corners of the warehouse. Normally, uh, the workers will follow our inspector and then we put the uh, QC stamp or label on the cartons that we have randomly select and the workers will help to uh, take out the cartons from the whole batch. Right. So um, I don't see any more questions over here. Sherfang is asking usually how soon we can get the report after each inspection. Within 24 hours after the inspection. Yeah. Okay. So I guess just one last question from me and uh, Mark, Kevin, I don't know if you have any more questions, uh, but one issue that we have in the inspections industry in China and India and everywhere else, I guess, is, um, you know, sometimes the inspectors are not very honest <laughs> and, you know, they will go into the factory and they will maybe ask for a kickback from the factory to pass the inspection or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what kind of checks do you have in place to control the inspectors, whether in India or China? Yeah, this is a good question because it's also our uh, main concern in our daily management work, how to avoid the bribery issue, how to control it because um, it's a, it, it will ruin our reputation. Our, of, of also our brand image if there is a bribery issue. So one of the measures is uh, like I introduced just now, we have, uh, we trust have uh, 310 full-time inspectors. They are all our full-time employees. And uh, this is the main unique selling point uh, we trust of WeTrust compared with other inspection service. We insist on hiring first. We need to insist uh, hiring only the full-time inspectors. Uh, hiring part-time QC. We know many inspection companies, they will hire part-time QC and then, uh, then the cost will be lower, but this will increase the risk of bribery issue. So hiring full-time inspector is one measure. And also uh, WeTrust is the only inspection company that is offering the, uh, the opportunity for the inspector to have the shares of the company. So we would like, we, we hope that uh, we, our inspector can connect their long-term benefit together with the, the companies uh, 
benefit. So we 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 trust actually we have over uh seventy shareholders. Share they they are all our employees working for VTrust, and some of them are the inspectors. So this is one of the measure uh, we, because for to avoid the bribery, we need to control, we need to punish, uh, but at the same time, we need to provide enough uh, incentive for, for the employee to know that they, it's not worthy for them to sacrifice the long-term uh, benefit to for for some for a few a little, some little money from the factory so this is about the incentive and the motivation part and of course we will have the control system we'll have 100 percent uh we'll have code of conduct letter with the communication letter with the supplier to tell them clearly we trust Unlike other inspection company, we do not uh, accept any gifts or money. If it's uh, detective, we will tell the buyer, uh, please do not try to bribe our inspector. And in case the inspector asks for any uh, gifts or money, they, they can contact with our top management immediately. We leave the contact details in the communication letter. And uh, we have this communication at least in two rounds, two, two letters. First one is when we send the inspection notice from the CS team. And the second one is when the inspector arrives at the factory, which present a communication letter, again, anti-bribery communication letter. And also we will have the uh, survey after each inspection to know to know uh, whether, whether our inspector has followed the uh, work instructions strictly for the inspection. And also we will have the an announced audit by ourselves. We also do the quality check by ourselves. We randomly select some inspection and then uh, the supervisor or the manager in different area will sometimes we will cross check between different areas. We'll uh, go to the factory uh, normally in the afternoon of the inspection and then compare the, the draft report prepared on site and the actual product in order to dis to check if the inspector they have a uh, they are working strictly according to our standard to pro, uh, to, to prevent the bribery issue. Yeah. So basically, to control, to 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 punish. In, oh, for the punish part, we sign the we have uh, the terms in the agreement with each inspector. Just now we mentioned we hire only full time inspector. And we mentioned that when we have the contract with them, we mentioned clearly in case there is any bribery issue detecting, uh, the they will be uh, dismissed immediately. Right. That yeah. sounds really so, good. Yeah. We have different measures to uh, prevent this problem. Okay. Yeah, because I know, um, Mark, Kevin, do you remember we had interviewed one company recently uh, during the last VIS? And they said they don't allow any third party inspection companies to come into the factory. They don't even allow agents to come into the factory because I think they had had a bad experience yeah. with one of the inspectors. So, but I think by and large, most companies in India are okay to work with, uh, you know, third party inspection companies. That's not an issue. Okay, great. Awesome. So this has been really fantastic. Now we were supposed to, announce the 5,000th <laughs> Facebook <laughs> member live, but we do not have <laughs> any uh, <laughs> applications <laughs> for the Facebook group as of now. We're still at 4,996. So we'll have to you wait. You get my name, Megla. <laughs> <laughs> no, we cannot. <laughs> but, um, whoever the 5,000th member is, there is a very special gift for him or her, VTrust is offering a free inspection to the 5,000th members. So totally free, wow. completely free. You will not have to pay anything at all. And I was going to play this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to play this nice animation when the, the, the person's name would be chosen. <laughs> They're all probably rushing to the page now, Megla. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Everyone's signing up their partner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah awesome. That was a fantastic presentation, ladies. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's um, look, there's a lot of people 
Um, I, I think it's look it, as far as it, 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 you know security wise and and you know you sort of get into the mode that the people um, getting products made and they're in in Australia and the products get made in China or a different country to have someone to go there and sort of send you videos, photos, and the comprehensive report that you guys put together is blew me away. <laughs> <When I> was, <laughs> wow, it's so comprehensive. Um, it's amazing. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, we, I think we're going to be using you guys. <laughs> and I think, too, you need to sort of set your expectations of what you want. Yeah. Um, you know, from the start when you're getting your product manufactured, you need to know in your own mind exactly what you want it to look like and what you want the quality to be um, so you can, you know, sort of convey that, number one, to the manufacturer and, number two, on your report. Um, it's no good just saying, you know, can you just check this and being very blasé about it. You need to mm. have in your mind exactly what quality you want and let's hope it's, you know, top quality Um you know, on every product because it's very difficult yeah. for people. I think to I think Tatiana said before, Mark, that um, one of the biggest um, problems is just un misunderstanding. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I I know that when we're talking about um, handmade products, we've got some handmade products, and the handmade products we've got, if you've got six of those handmade products. They've got different flaws in the in in the the product, but it's a fantastic mm. handmade product. But I could see um, from my engineering background that the, the, there's a, a problem. But it's a handmade product, and so what you know we we know what's acceptable to us, and we've accepted that it's a handmade product, and we've made our our customers aware that it's a handmade product. So. You know, we sort of it's a fine balance that we've sort of struck with our with our customers, um, and you know they appreciate that it is a handmade product, mm -hmm. and each one is going to be slightly different. So mm -hmm. yeah, it is a hard thing to to um, put over. It's not like it's if, so, if something's mass produced and it's a machine or a, or a tool, and that mm -hmm. tool makes that same product all the time. You know, is to say like a plastic item, and a plastic item comes out of the tooling. You know, it's it, the only flaw it's going to have is yes. a different coloration, or you know, like you said, insects. Insects. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of that too. <laughs> In the factory. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and two, sometimes like the products might be made like in you know like villages where it might be like say macrame or something like that. Excuse that noise. That's our dog trying to get through the Venetian blinds to get out the door. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, those things, you well, obviously got to look into, you know, toleration, you know, the tolerance of that as well because if somebody's sitting down making something, like it's never, ever going to be exactly the same if you put ten of those in a row because of just the general way that they're made. So I think everyone's got to look at their own products and make a checklist before they start when they start to, you know, look at what they're having made. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah, and I think having you guys sort of there for, for you know, $300 and some people who are doing this for the first time and invested a lot of money, that, you know, just for that, that before, you know, putting a, a lot of money onto a ship and sending it overseas to have that satisfaction and that peace of mind that you guys have, you know, gone over it. And, and so when it hits America, they know in their mind that if they do get problems from Amazon customers, that, you know, they can sort of in their mind, they've got your report and they can work out, hey, you know, sort of what's true, what's not true and how to, how to handle those things. Because some people, when they get a, a one-star review in America, they go, oh, my, my product... <laughs> and the whole world just comes falling down. Um, but sometimes it's not that the product, it's, you know, it's the way different people view things. Isn't that right, Mark? Yeah, well, look, everyone's perception of what's perfect, I mean, you know, is different. I mean, you might look at something and go, oh, that's fine, and I might go, but, oh, I can see a speck 
Um, like we had a panel shop years ago and we'd have this guy come in with his brand new car and he'd be going to Kevin, can you see that defect in the paint? And we're going, uh, yes, yeah, certainly, we'll fix it. But you couldn't even find this like spec that he had this X-ray vision. So his idea of perfection and obviously the manufacturer and ours was like, well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it, but we'll polish it to keep you happy because some people's expectations are up here and others are just, you know, normal. And others don't care. <laughs> so it's, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. So as an importer yeah. and brand owner, it's up to up to us to decide what is acceptable and what is not. And we need to like define that and make sure that the supplier is clear on that and also the inspection company is clear on that. Mm. So cool. Okay, awesome. This has been great. So yeah, thank you so much, uh, Tatiana and Grace, for your time, the awesome presentation. And just as a reminder, everyone, so you're going to get a 5% discount on your first inspection that you book with VTrust. I'll be sending out an, uh, a link to a web page that you can sign up on, or you can also email Tatiana and tell her that you watched this video and uh, claim your 5% discount. So just mention India Sourcing Trip or uh, the Asian seller when you reach out to Tatiana for the 5% discount. And if you're on our mailing list, then we will also email um, the link to everybody. And congratulations to our uh, 5,000 <laughs> member, whoever you are. <laughs> we hope you can watch the video later. Where are you? <laughs> Come <Yes>. forth. <laughs> OK, great. Thank you so much, everyone. You have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks, girl. Yeah. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.